Good morning, folks. Everything new under the sun. This is a kind of a little bit of a Bible study, if you will, about Isaiah 17, the destruction of Damascus. What I want to focus on, though, is what I believe is an economic collapse uh, referred to in Isaiah 17, and I think it's also shown in Ezekiel 38. We're not going to get there, but I want to read the scriptures from Isaiah 17 because I think part and parcel of Isaiah 17 is an impending economic collapse collapse and I think that's going to come sooner than we think. I think all these events are going to come sooner than we think and I think an economic collapse worldwide is the one kind of global event that would catapult us into end time Bible prophecy very very quickly as soon as that occurred whatever triggered it as soon as that occurred <clears throat> I think we would be right into end time Bible prophecy and that would really trigger a lot of the prophetic wars, a lot of the prophetic um, happenings, the mark of the beast, the antichrist figure, that would allow um, a lot of these things, I think, to come into place. For example, if we're going to uh, um, roll into um, <clears throat> the world a uh, mark of the beast system, a one world currency, I think you need an economic collapse in order to um, convince the citizens of the world that we need a world currency, that we need to get rid of our sovereign currencies. Without an economic collapse, there's no specific need where all countries will come together and say, yeah, let's move to a one world uh, uh, currency. Um, we don't need a one world currency unless we have an absolute total collapse. People are starving. And uh, then the world, the government come, can, can, can come together and say, we need a world government to deal with this crisis. And we need a one world currency to deal with this crisis. And we're, we need a one world leader to implement this. So I don't think uh, prophetically or just uh, um, logically that the world gets to a one world government, a one world currency, uh, a one world leader without an economic collapse. I mean, you can have wars, you can have all the wars you want. I still think an economic collapse worldwide that uh, causes the whole world to be starving um, is the only uh, worldwide event that would uh, trigger um, much of the end time Bible prophecy. And so you would think the Bible would speak of it. And I think it does. This is uh, one chapter in the Bible which speaks of uh, um, a yet, yet future event, the destruction of Damascus. Damascus is the oldest um, um, uh, always lived in uh, city. Um, it has never been completely destroyed. It's always been inhabited. Um, it's the longest or the oldest um, inhabited city pretty much in the world. And it's never been destroyed. And the Bible says it's going to be destroyed at, at some point. It's going to be a ruinous heap. And so that's a pretty strong prophecy. That's a pretty bold statement for the Bible to be making to suggest that uh, what has otherwise been the longest inhabited city in the world to be a coming ruinous heap, something major happens. Let's read briefly here. The burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. The cities of Aurora are forsaken. They shall be for flocks which shall lie down, and none shall make uh, them afraid. The fortress also, it says, um, shall cease from Ephraim and the kingdom from Damascus. And the remnant of Syria shall be as the glory of the children, saith the Lord of hosts. It says, and in that day it shall come to pass that the glory of Jacob shall be made thin and the fatness of his flesh shall wax lean. Let's stop on this verse for a while. And this is, this is a passage, this is some detail about Isaiah 17 that I, I haven't really heard anybody speak of. I don't, I don't recall anybody really making mention of this. Speaking of the glory of Jacob being made thin, the fatness of his flesh uh, wax lean. So Jacob refers to Israel. Jacob was renamed to Israel. And, and in the greater prophetic uh, parallel and picture, Jacob represents uh, Israel, the, the, the people of Israel. And it says, Jacob shall be made thin. Does that mean a time of prosperity? Does that mean a time of wealth and abundance? And the fatness of his flesh shall wax lean. <clears throat> it says, and in that day it shall come to pass that the glory of Jacob shall be made thin. I think uh, Israel, you know, well, I don't think, Israel became a nation in 1948, and they have been richly blessed. They have had abundance um, they are. They have made fat with their abundance, their food, their money, etc. And it sa says that, that apparently in conjunction with the scripture where Damascus becomes a ruinous heap, that, uh, that the glory of Jacob is going to be made thin. Now, does this mean 
economic collapse or does it, is it speaking purely of the, the glory? Uh, maybe in both cases, maybe um, the brilliance, the, the uh, um, uh, how Israel is looked at, right, right now they are looked at as a great, uh, uh, you know, a westernized, westernized sort of nation, <clears throat> rich, um, abundant, lots of oil uh, um, capacity, reserves, etc., lots of money. And it says uh, that Jacob, uh, Israel, will be made thin. I think there's going to be some economic collapse. And <clears throat> Israel's not going to have an economic collapse without the rest of the world um, because they, are, uh, they have abundant resources. So I think a worldwide economic collapse causes not only Israel, but Israel spoken of in this passage, but the whole world to collapse and be made thin and, and, the, and the, the flesh of the world to, be, uh, to wax lean. And it shall be as when the harvestmen gather corn and reapeth the ears with his arm. And it shall be as he that gathereth ears from the valley of Rephaim. Yet gleaning grapes shall be left. So there's going to be um, a few, uh, a bit of food, uh, a bit of resources left over. As the shaking of the olive tree, two or three berries in the top of the uppermost bough. Four or five in the outmost fruitful branches thereof, saith the Lord. So there's going to be a remnant, just like the people of Israel in the last days. I think there's going to be a remnant of food. There's going to be a remnant of wealth. There's going to be a remnant of people. Um, I think I think there's parallels there uh, related to the people and the food. And I think Isaiah 17 happens at a time when uh, probably there is there has been an econ worldwide economic collapse. Why otherwise would be they be taking a drastic measure to destroy Damascus? And we don't know exactly, <clears throat> but I think it's interesting. And honestly, this to me it lines up with my understanding that. Uh, my belief that uh, a worldwide economic collapse is needed uh, before we're catapulted into end time Bible prophecy, until the Antichrist can be revealed and um, install a one world currency, install the mark of the beast. We need an economic collapse. And we have uh, stories to that measure. This is the economiccollapseblog.com. We have seen this before, last three sessions, and now it is the worst it has ever been. This is just a recent article. There are several economic articles. Um, since the last recession, non-financial corporate debt has ballooned more than $9 trillion as of November 2018. Remember, the U.S. Uh, debt is sitting at $22 trillion, $23 uh, trillion, uh, huge U.S. debt. And that doesn't even consider, obviously, the, rest of the debt that the rest of the world is in, the dire economic situation. This is just one article um, that happens to be from today. And uh, the, US, the, the debt in the world is massive, massive, massive. I could go to the, the uh, uh, U.S. debt uh, calculator. Let's go there. U.S. debt. Uh, U.S. debt clock dot org. Let's see what the U.S. debt clock dot org shows. Twenty two trillion two hundred and ten billion one hundred and twenty five million three hundred and four hundred thousand dollars. That's U.S. national debt. This doesn't even consider um, a world uh, debt. Let's go to the world debt clock uh let's see i don't know if this 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 is this so is china so china has nine trillion in debt japan is 11 trillion in debt uh, you you when you look at that per capita that's a huge amount of debt per capita that's over 100 percent um uh, external jet debt to gdp ratio canada down here from where i am uh, at uh, in, uh, getting near two trillion uh, dollars in debt and it goes all the way down so the world is in massive debt i think the world ends up in economic collapse which is the only reason that the world allows a one world government to come into place allows an antichrist figure um, to be leader of the world and allows a one world currency a mark of the beast system spoken of in daniel in the book of daniel it says, and on that day uh, shall a man look to his maker and his eyes shall have respect for the holy one of israel they're going, to see, they're going to be in desperation. They're going to be desperate. They're going to be starving. And at that time, then the people of the world, I think, are going to look to God and say, you know what? Maybe there is a God. Maybe we need to call on him. And that is not interesting. One last <clears throat> sort of kick at the can for the people of the world that God allows them um, by, uh, by this famine, by this worldwide uh, trouble on the earth. Uh, Revelation, I believe it's chapter 6, also speaks of uh, economic hard times, famines in the land, um, and, and the uh, the judgments upon the earth, and that's coming. 
It says, uh, And he shall not look to the altars, the work of his hands, neither shall respect that which his fingers have made, either the groves or the images. So man will be desperate to a point where he's not looking to the things he's made. He's probably not looking to his money anymore. His money's worthless. He ends up, he has nothing else to look for. He can't um, put his trust or faith in anything, in his in his health, in his wealth, in his job. Apparently, at this point in time, man has nothing left that he can look to, he can trust in, and uh, it's really forcing all the citizens, of the citizens of the world to look to God. In that day shall his strong cities be as forsaken, be as a forsaken bough, uh, and an uppermost branch which they left of the children of Israel because of the children of Israel, and there shall be desolation. I think again, I think this speaks to the greater world, the greater planet, that an economic collapse is part and parcel of the destruction of Damascus um, from Isaiah 17. So I think Isaiah 17 reflects an economic collapse. Um, and uh, the next video, probably tomorrow, we're going to take a look at Ezekiel 38 and 39. Is there any indication of economic collapse there? Many say they're parallel scriptures, that there are the same prophecies happening in each case, and, um, and that they're connected. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at um, uh, economic collapse in Ezekiel 38 and 39. So stay tuned for that one. I thought I would show you this one. Um, it's an interesting, you know, read this scripture over by yourself. Um, tell me if this does not uh, reflect some sort of economic collapse in the world. And I think we're closer than we think here. I'll leave it there, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.